I'm Colby from the minnowbucket.net and I'm at the Rose River with Gary Burwell. Gary is a guide here at the Rose River. Gary, tell me a little bit about yourself, your background uh, in the Rose River. Okay, yeah, uh, I'm a retired engineer with Northrop Grumman uh, uh, about eight years ago. Now I'm a guide out here. I've been guiding for eight years out here. Uh, I learned to fly fish when I was 10 years old uh, on the Spring Creeks in Central Pennsylvania. My dad taught me how to fly fish 10 years old and I'm 70 now, so I've been at it for quite a while. Uh, up there it was uh, on Spruce Creek or Spring Creek and it's primarily all wild brown trout. Uh, here at the Rose it's all, it's all rainbow trout. Uh, but. Uh, yeah, I, that's where I learned to fish on those spring creeks up in, in uh, central Pennsylvania, and I've been guiding here for eight years. Uh, I primarily guide on the rows here. I do guide uh, down on the Rappahannock River uh, at Fredericksburg uh, during the spring shed run, and that's, uh, that's quite a bit of fun. Tell me a little bit about, uh, about the farm, uh, about the Rose River Farm oh, okay. here. Rose River Farm, uh, it's in a great location. Uh, it's it's very convenient and close to some big metropolitan areas. Uh, we're close to an hour and a half from from D.C. and we're an hour and a half from Richmond and 45 minutes from Charlottesville, and that's where most of our customers come from. Uh, because we're convenient uh, and we have a complete uh, facility here, uh, we have cabins to rent. Very very nice cabins. Uh, uh, two bedroom, two bath cabins. Uh, at, uh, a lot of people come down uh, in four, four people groups and they rent the cabins uh, and the night before and then come out and fish the next day and drive home. So it's a very, very popular place. It's, it's difficult to get a reservation here, I can tell you that. Uh, it, it's very, very popular. It's absolutely beautiful location out here. Uh, and we provide uh, anything that uh, a beginning fisherman might need uh, or even a, a experienced fisherman we have a little self-service uh, fly shop up in the barn so uh, somebody needs some flies or leader or tippet or weights or anything like that we have a, a self-service uh, little fly shop up there uh, and if a beginner comes out here we provide them with fly rods, leaders Flies, instruction, anything they need uh, at the Rose River. Uh, a lot of people just come out and spend, don't even fish, come out and spend the weekend in the cabins. They're so nice. Uh, it's just a good getaway from from the city and the metropolitan areas. Uh, so it's a very, very popular place. Uh, Can you tell me a little bit about uh, what a client should expect from you if they're coming out for a guided trip? Uh, if Clients coming out here, if he's a beginner, uh, like I said, we provide all the equipment he might need. Uh, give him, give them in, in stri basic instruction. Uh, cover a little bit of the technology of, of the equipment. Uh, go over the different kind of rods, uh, uh, the waders, any of the equipment that uh, a person needs to fly fish. Uh, we cover that so they have a basic understanding. So if they take a beginner class and they want to go buy a fly rod, at least they'll have some idea when they walk into the fly shop uh, <clears throat> of what, what kind of rod they need. Uh, and, uh, and, they won't, and, and they won't either buy a piece of junk or something that's too expensive for them. Uh, they'll leave here with the with ability to go buy a basic rod that fits their, fits their ability. Uh, and we cover the basic stuff, such as uh, the different kind of flies that we use, wet flies, dry flies. Uh, and we go over the different kind of knots that they, they need to tie, like uh, the crew clinch knot and surges knot for tying on tippet material and stuff like that. So a uh, beginner spends a day out here. Uh, they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna catch a few fish, and they're going to leave uh, very happy with a beginning uh, experience of fly fishing so now as far as the flies go uh, are there any that you really recommend I know that depends a little bit on the time of year but it does in in the winter time uh, there's a lot of 
small flies we use, like midges, uh, primarily, because uh, that's the food that the fish have available here. We get good hatches of little black stoneflies and little midges in the wintertime. Uh, in the warmer weather, in the spring, uh, in the summer, we fish more with, uh, with lily buggers and nymphs. Uh, and there are different dry fly patterns that, that we have out here. We get different hatches. Like I said, in the winters, we get the, the midges and the little black stoneflies. In the summer, we get caddis, uh, uh, blue quills, uh, quill gordons, uh, oh, yellow stoneflies. Uh, uh, just a lot of different sulfurs, a lot of different hatches we get in the summer. Uh, and, and that's basically, you know, the different, different times of year, different different flies, and then in the fall, we do real well on terrestrial type dry flies with beetles and, and crickets and hoppers, and that's primarily in October and November. Uh, we do real well with those kind of flies. As and I have one particular fly, and I'll show it to you. And this is a woolly bugger that I developed myself, and it's called uh, Douglas, the owner here is nicknamed the, the Rose River Special. And it's basically a light olive uh, oily bugger with grizzly hackle and a black marabou tail. And the way I developed this fly was uh, the state stocks a stream below and above the farm here. And I'll occasionally go out and catch a couple of trout and keep them and eat them. And when I check their, their, uh, their stomach content, I found a bunch of little green moss mixed with uh, with little uh, freshwater snails in there and so I went home <laughs> and so I think I'll come up with a pattern that's close to that and lo and behold it, it, it works not only here but it works I fished in Wyoming and Colorado and Utah with it and uh, and back up in Pennsylvania a lot and it works no matter where I go but uh, yeah it's my own special pattern you won't be able to buy it anywhere except in my flash so. <laughs> all right great uh, Gary you mentioned earlier that uh, you guys stock the Rose River with rainbow trout here can you tell me a little bit about the size of those rainbow are they pretty small or pretty big uh, the rainbows here kind of vary the majority of them are, are pretty large fish uh, I'll, the average trout here is going to be 16 inches. You are going to catch a few in the 12, 13 inch range, but the majority of fish you catch here are going to be from 16 inches and up. And the, there are quite a few 18 to 20 inch trout in here. Uh, when we when we stock them, we bring in uh, from a place down in in Monterey, Virginia. <coughs> Excuse me. And what he does is we get them by the pound. So when they when we stock, there's going to be trout in the, in that those 300 fish we get anywhere from 12 to 13 inches up to 20 inches. So the size, but the majority of them uh, are from the 16 inch up range. Uh, you're not going to catch a lot of small ones. They're mostly going to be good sized fish. And that's why we recommend when you come out here bring a four or five weight rod, uh, you get a 16, 17 inch trout on a three weight rod or something like that, you got your hands full, and it's hard on the fish because you gotta, gotta play them too long. So. All right, Gary, well, thank you for your time today. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting out on the water with you. You ready to go catch some fish? You bet. All right, let's do we'll it. Get a big one. That's a nice fish. Nice fish. Yeah. Nice fish. <laughs>